Hello and welcome to St Chad's here on Mothering Sunday as you join us as we worship together. We realise this is strange for some of us, new for some of us, as gathering to worship in our homes or wherever we are, around a computer or a phone or a tablet as we take this time to worship. This is our first week of needing to worship outside of our church building. We're doing this for the first time. So we're trying out a format for today. Next week we may look different. Our values are we want to be able to enable families to gather together to worship together. We want to make this about engaging with God rather than just watching a TV show. We want to feel like we're connected even though we're in different places. So we think coming together at the same time can be really helpful. After the service, we're going to have coffee over in the Life Centre, which will be a live on Facebook Live, a chance for you to send in questions, to interact with us, to send in prayer points, and we'll be sharing more of what we're doing at St Chad's over the coming weeks. But as we begin, let me pray, and then I'm going to hand over to Ellie for the first part of our service. Lord God, today as we come together as your church in different places, we pray for your Holy Spirit to be with every single one of us right now. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. Come and meet with us. We thank you, Lord, that place is no boundary to you, that you, a Holy Spirit, can be in all places with every part of your family. Amen. Hi, everyone. Ellie here. Um, this morning, it's Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all of those important women in our families. Um, I thought I'd come with a game, and then we're going to pray for everyone, if that's okay. So, in the youth, we have been getting into this game, which is called Sussed. And it's all about how well do you know each other. So I thought we should work out, have we got the women in our life sussed? So some of you will have your mums in the room, some of you she'll be down the end of a phone, some of you will have someone in their life that they can think of. And I want you to see if you can predict their answers. So, question number one. Which underwater job would she like best? A, underwater, ar underwater archaeology. B, an underwater tour guide. Or C, underwater model. So I'm going to give you a couple of seconds, work out what you think her answer is, and then see if you got it right. Okay, second question. What would she prefer to learn? Learn how to fly a helicopter, learn how to fly a plane, or learn how to fly a rocket? Work out what you think your answer is, and then check and see if it's right. Okay, third question. What would she prefer to do in the park? Slide down a slide, swing on a swing, or go as fast as she can on a merry-go-round? Right, see what your answer is, and if she got it as well. Okay, last question. Which food would she prefer if she could only eat one type of food for a whole year? Fish and chips, sausage and mash, or pizza? So one of the things I love about this game is that it gives some really good conversation starters. So even if you've had to remember your answers and you're going to chat to your mum later, there are actually some good questions to ask friends and family too. So I'll be asking you next time I see you, what food would you eat for the whole year? Anyway, on to praying. I've been thinking about what we could pray for these amazing women in our lives. Um, and I think the first thing we should do is thank God for the influence that they have on us, on the way they've prayed for us, on the way that they've looked after us, on the way they've inspired us. Secondly, I think it'd be really good to pray for God's blessing on them. Things are changing and it's all looking different. Let's ask God to bless them and to protect them. And finally, if they're there or if you can hold them in your heart, let's pray that God would fill them with his Holy Spirit. Let's ask him to empower them to be even more like him in this coming season, even more blessed, know his favour and be that supernatural power that we know these women are. I'm going to pray. Um, why don't you guys join in with me? If you're with the person in the room, that's great. But even not, let's pray for the women in our nation and actually the wider world. 
God, I thank you that you are the most amazing, incredible parent. And I thank you for the mothers in our community, for those women who, um, who stepped up and been an influence in our lives. Father, would you bless them? Would you protect them? Would you equip them? And Holy Spirit, would you fill them up, that they would be full of you, empowered to be who you've designed them to be. Amen. We're going to come to a time of worship, and this will look different uh, than it does on a normal Sunday when the band's playing. Worship is far more than just singing. Singing is one expression of worship, but there are so many different ways to do it. And really what we want to encourage you in this time is just to worship together or on your own, however you feel led to worship. Some ideas for that, Um, one of them could be that you pause this video now and you might want to open up a new internet window, um, another YouTube site and just go on to some worship videos. We're going to supply a worship playlist of suggested songs but you can feel free to go on and just listen to some worship, uh, to sing along, to dance, to do whatever you want to do. That's one way that you could engage with some sung worship now. Alternatively, you might want to spend some time uh, in silence. Just reflecting, it might be that you want to reflect on the words of Psalm 19, because that is a really, uh, just a really apt psalm for this time. It might be that you want to read those words out loud. It might be that you want to do some journaling, or maybe as a family you want to express more creatively in worship, maybe through painting or drawing. Really, the options are endless in what you could do. The whole heart of this is just engaging in worship to God. And so I encourage you now, that we're just going to worship, to pause this video, and to maybe take 10, 15 minutes, or however long you like, just to worship together, or on your own, just in seeking his face, turning your eyes and fixing your eyes on Jesus, and just declaring his praise. Will is now going to read our first reading. Our first reading is taken from Psalm 24, verse 1 to 10. The earth is the Lord's, and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. For he founded it on the seas, and established it on the waters. Who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? The one who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not trust in an idol or swear by a false god, They will receive their blessing from the Lord and vindication from God their Saviour. Such is the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face, God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, you gates be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, you gates, Lift them up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is he, this King of glory? The Lord Almighty, he is the King of glory. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is from Colossians, and Katie is going to read that for us. Colossians 2, verses 1 to 7. I want you to know how hard I am contending for you and for those at Laodicea and for all who have not yet met me personally. My goal is that they may be encouraged in heart and united in love so that they may have the full riches of complete understanding in order that they may know the mystery of God, namely Christ, in whom are hidden all hidden treasures of wisdom and knowledge. I tell you this so that no one may deceive you by fine-sounding arguments. For though I am absent from you in body, I am present with you in spirit and delight to see how disciplined you are and how firm your faith in Christ is. So then, just as you receive Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him strengthened in the faith as you were taught and overflowing with thankfulness. 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As we come to today, I want to just share a few thoughts I have on our passages and where we're at at this season of uh, very strange times as we consider how we best respond to the coronavirus. The two chapters of the Bible I chose for today are Psalm 24 and Colossians 2. To me, captured something of uh, what we want to look at from God's Word at this time. I admit the initial thought of where do we turn in the Bible for words at this time when there is so much of Scripture that speaks into our situation, that speaks into difficult times, that speaks into times of confusion, fear and doubt. And as I considered it, you may have noticed in our readings two little things which connect with the season. In Psalm 24, the reference to clean hands. And in Colossians 2, that verse, Though I'm absent from you in body, I'm present with you in spirit, and delight to see how disciplined you are and how firm your faith in Christ is. The psalm starts with a great declaration, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it. And I chose that because it is a great declaration in every season that all of the earth belongs to the Lord. One of the aspects of this pandemic is it is a global pandemic affecting the whole world. It's drawing the whole world together, but it is still the world that God created. And even though there are very challenging and, uh, and scary things going on in the world, we remember that God created it and he is Lord over all. He founded it on the seas and established it in the waters. The psalm then goes on to look at how we ascend the mountain of the Lord, draw nearer to God, and that phrase about clean hands. We've become perhaps very aware of clean hands over the last few weeks, very alert to ways of keeping personal hygiene. But of course this psalm is about spiritual hygiene, it's about living right with God. It's about refining and cleansing and purifying. And one of the things this virus will do, it will change the world as we know it forever. And some things will change and die, and that's always painful. But sometimes there are seasons of winter, of cleansing, of change, where the things that are not important fade away, and we address the things that are important. And what I see here in these verses are, as we draw nearer to God, he will refine us and purify us. He will make us more like Jesus in this season if we choose to ascend the hill of the Lord. He goes on to say, such is the generation of those who seek your face. You will probably have more time on your hands at home, away from people, in the coming weeks. I know for me the past week has meant a vast amount of cancelling things in my diary. Use that time to seek God's face, to know him better. And then the final part of the psalm, lift up your heads, you gates, be lifted up, you everlasting doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory, the Lord strong in battle? Our doors may be closed, the doors of the church may be closed, we may be isolated, but the doors of our hearts and our lives can invite God in at this time. It's, a, it's an ancient prayer, but it's a prayer of a city saying, God, we want your presence with us. Today, the archbishops have called today to be a national day of prayer. That's why a major part of this service has been to pray, to pray for our nation, to pray for our communities. And in that day of prayer, we say, come in, God. Come and save us. Come and rescue us. He is the King of glory, the Lord Almighty. Our second reading is Paul, distant from his church in Colossae, and where that he's not met some of them personally. There may be some of you who are watching this online, who I've never met. And as I read this, it resonates with my heart as a church leader at this time. My goal is that they may be encouraged in heart and united in love. We've had to, this week to reimagine what church looks like, what it looks like to not be in the same building at the same place, to not be meeting one another face to face, and realising that still we can look to be encouraged in heart and united in love. Why? So we have the full riches of complete understanding to know the mystery of God, namely Christ. Jesus came to earth to show us what God is like. And he came to show us that God is a God of grace and mercy. That on the cross, justice and mercy met. And in the words of the Psalms, they kissed. Whatever we think about this virus, whatever we think about this pandemic, 
Because of the cross, we know that God's justice has been poured out on Jesus and his mercy and grace are poured out on us. And I think it's important that we do not see this virus as something sent by God because we know that Jesus has shown us what God is like, that he's a God of grace and mercy. But in the dark times, we turn to him with love and with grace. Paul goes on to say, in Jesus are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. We need wisdom and we need knowledge right now. We need to understand what God is saying. We need to know uh, what his ways are in order to make good and right decisions. And we need knowledge of his word. So whilst we are absent from one another in body, may our wisdom increase. And let's keep praying for wisdom for our government, our public health authorities, our NHS, and all those who need to make decisions. Paul goes on, I tell you this so that no one may deceive you by fine-sounding arguments. There are a lot of arguments out there. There are a lot of opinions out there. Because I've had to engage more in social media this week than perhaps ever before, I've been swamped by the world of opinions, thoughts. It's an amazing how in a time of change, everyone has an opinion. And Paul actually writes to say, I want you to be not deceived by the fine-sounding arguments. Some of the fine-sounding arguments in our culture are conspiracy theories, are negativity, are criticism, are claiming that people's motives are false. Some of the fine-sounding arguments are to look at some of the, the hoarding or the, the um, stockpiling and, and that we are a nation of critici- uh, that is critical of one another and selfish. But I'm seeing more stories of life, more stories of people caring for their neighbours, looking out for those who are isolated, wanting to show love. Actually, the fine-sounding arguments might be that everything's a mess and everyone's selfish, but the reality is that God's goodness is in people and we're seeing that love. For though I'm absent from you in body, I am present with you in spirit. And just like to see how disciplined you are, how firm your faith in Christ is. We are absent from one another in body right now. But through different ways, through praying, through messaging, through the fact we have the technology to stay connected better than we ever had before, we can be with one another at this time. Keep on reaching out. And don't just wait for others to contact you. Take the initiative to contact. And delight to see how disciplined you are. Paul loved the way that the Colossian church was disciplined. It took patterns Some people over the next few weeks are going to have a lot of time and space on their hands, but not the option to do the usual routines. I really encourage you to think about now what your patterns of self-discipline will be in this season. What new things you're going to take up, how you're going to shape your day. Paul delighted to see how disciplined the Colossian church were. Let us grow in that core element of following God, of maintaining self-discipline in this time. So then, just as you receive Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live lives in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. Let's do that. Let's continue to live in Jesus. Let's put our roots more deeply into him. Let's let him strengthen us and overflow with thankfulness. Let's take a moment now to think of the things we are grateful for. In a moment of silence, think of the things in your life that you want to say thank you for at this time. Lord God, we thank you for one another. We thank you for St Chad's and the way we as a family can support one another through this. We thank you for the NHS that we have incredible provision of health care. We thank you for the leadership shown by our government to protect and care for the vulnerable. We thank you for the family and friends we so much treasure. We thank you for this community in Romilly and the way it is pulling together to support one another. We thank you for your many gifts and blessings for us. We choose to overflow in thankfulness that in all things you are with us. Amen. And so we come to the end of our time here on YouTube uh, and we want to 
head over now to Facebook Live, which is going to be um, broadcast from the Life Center at 11.45 a.m. And that's our chance to connect with you, for you to send in your questions, your stories of what's going on in your community, how people are supporting one another, loving each other. We want you to send in your prayer points and the things that we can be praying for for one another. We'd love to hear your thoughts on the service, your thoughts on what I've shared. We want to share with you what some of the things we're doing to care for our community, to share God's love at this time, and to support each other. So join us on Facebook Live at 11.45. As we finish, we've done this final part outside because the church building may be closed, but we, the church, are full of the love of God, and we have this amazing opportunity to share that love with everyone around us in a new and fresh way. So may you know God's blessing upon you in this time. Amen.